Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the list transform mini function, where we are actually going to generate new rows of data using the function. So our data set we're going to be looking at is, we got sales for people for specific months in a year. But you can see here, if we look at someone like this person, Philly, she basically has some months where she has zero sales. So what I want to do is I want to use this function and actually generate an insert months where she didn't have sales and insert zero sales for those months. So enough talking, let me show you how to do it. All right, so click on the data set, go to data, say from table or range to get it into Power Query. Let's quickly look at list transform many. It projects elements from an input using a list, okay? Two functions, a collection function and a result transform function. Let me show you what that means. So we're gonna start a new blank query, a little example, and we're gonna say, cool, give me the advanced editor. And in here, I'm simply gonna say, let's look at list transform many. Cool, and the first thing we need to give it is a list. We're just gonna give it a list of one, two, five. So a list of numbers. So now your collection transform function is gonna be, uh, it, it needs to contain an X because we're giving it a list of something and the function will produce an output. So we're gonna say, okay, cool, let's use uh, the date function. And we're simply gonna say 2024. And I'm gonna feed it the X, which is gonna be a number one, two, three, four, five. And the first, cool. And now let's look at the result transform function. And in here, we need to give it two inputs, the X and the Y. Now the Y is the output of this function, which is a date. So this is actually the Y. The X is that. Okay, so now we're gonna say, give me the X, which will simply be a number. And I'm gonna say, text from, convert that number into text. And I'm gonna say, cool, and, and we insert a little space. And now the Y, if I put Y there, it's gonna be a date because it's the output of this function. But let's convert that into text as well. So I'm gonna say there, date to text. I'm gonna give it the Y as an input. I'm gonna say, give me the format as month, 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 month. Close that up and say, okay. So now what you see, what happened over there, I'm just gonna open the function on the side here. You can see, we took a number, one, two, five. We got our collection transform function, which took the number as an input and transformed it into a date, into January to May. And then we get your result transform function, the Y being the output of that and the X being that. And we basically concatenated in there and it gave us this. So we generated data with this function. And we're gonna use that to generate our data. Okay, cool, done. Let's go back to our table. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need a list. So in, in terms of our problem, our list would be, we wanna insert months. So our list would be names and years. We're gonna start with that. So let's say insert a new step. And I'm gonna say table to rows because we need to convert this into a list. And that would simply convert it into a list. There we go, a list of lists. Cool, but that's not good enough. I just wanna return the name and the year, not all of that. So all I'm gonna do in there, in square brackets, I'm gonna say, give me the name and give me the year, enter. So now you will just have the name and the year. But you can see fully is repeated over there. I want a distinct list. I'm gonna say list distinct. And that's gonna give me a distinct list. So there's now a distinct list of each year for each person within that year. Okay, so that's the start of our function. So now we got the list that we're gonna start with. Okay, so let's go back into the advanced editor. And now we're just gonna say, let's start our function list transform from many. Cool, starting list, there we go, that's our starting list. And now we need to give it our collect transform function. Okay, because what we wanna do there is, we actually say, remember it always starts with the X because we're gonna feed it something and it's gonna give us the output. The output of this would be, the output is Y. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna say, this is quite simple because we just simply wanna insert Month. So it's going to be a list of 1, 2, 12. And now we're going to get it the result transform row, okay. the result transform function. And in there, we need to say x and y and give us that. Okay, remember now, that's the x and the output of this is the y. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to simply going to say x, which is the, the name and the year, and in curly brackets, give me the y, which is the 1 to 12. Right, I'm just gonna say, go for it. And now this, you can see, 
Now insert it like a month. So one, two, three, four. So Philly should have a row for every single month. And when we reach 12, she's going to start at one for the next year. That's pretty cool. So now we use it to generate rows of data. Okay, cool. Before we go on to the next phase of actually generating the record, let's quickly go back. I'm going to go back to my source. And each one of these rows in here is actually a record. But let's say I want to find a specific record. I'm just going to show you that. So let's say add a step here. Okay. And I, know I want to find instances where the name is equal to, let's say, Philly, where the year is equal to 2022 and the month is equal to two. So, okay. Now, if I do that, it actually is going to give me a record. This is a record. It told you like, hey, I found a match. There's your record. I found this in your table. But now observe what happens if the record cannot be found. So let's say for month three, it's going to give you an error like this. So now you want to deal with this error, this null case. So in this case, you can just use an optional parameter, which is a question mark. It's kind of like a try otherwise, the try otherwise function. So if you put a question mark there, it's simply going to return a null. Okay. So now instead of breaking, it will give you a null. But now you can also give it like in a case of a null, what do I want the value to be? So you can use a double question mark and you can say in a case where it is a null, simply tell, tell it that sales is equal to zero. Say so okay. So now in cases like this, where we couldn't find the match, it would be that. But in cases where we could find a match, it would return that. Okay, the actual record. So let's take this. I'm going to copy this out. I'm going to delete that step. Let's go back to our advanced editor. Okay, back in advanced editor. I'm now going to say and. I'm just going to paste that code in there because I want to build my data set. But now what I'm going to do is, instead of hard coding it like that for Philly, you can see this is now actually x is this list right so i can say where x and the name is always the first row remember the first row is zero we start counting at zero where the year is in curly brackets one from x and where the month you can see the month is the output of this function which is y okay i just need to wrap in brackets and now let's see what happens now it returns this. You can see, ah, the record. Okay, cool. It did something. Actually returning everything that we needed. But if we look at that, I want to zero like that. I want to say sales. I don't want to return just the record. I just want to say that. So now you can see there's the actual sales. So no sales, zero. Sales, a number. No sales, zero. Okay, cool. We basically solved it. All we need to do now is we need to return this instead of being a list of lists i'm just going to say table from rows and i want to kind of give it a column name so you can see the columns what are we going to call the columns i'm simply going to say table column names and i want to take the column names from the source and i want to wrap it up like that and say cool and there you go so there you can see for all the missing records uh, so for all the missing months we actually just inserted a zero and that's how you can use Let's transform many to actually achieve a thing like this and understanding how records work now. You can find records in a quite a cool function. Let's return it into Excel. And there we go. There we go. Excellent. Another Power Query solution done and dusted. Well, I hope you learned a lot in this video and you can apply some of that in your scenarios. BA Sensei, signing out.